Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. A little snowy back here. We're back on the YouTube yacht right there. Plenty of videos in the playlist or in the description of playlist. In the description, you can check it out, get you caught up to speed. But today we're working on the rebar work. The microphone on the back of the GoPro Media Mod doesn't work. This is number six video with it, I think. So I gotta do it like this and talk into the front one. We got more stuff on the way, it's just not here yet. This is number five rebar. We'll be using number five, number four, and number three. The number will tell you how many eighths of an inch diameter it is. So number five is five eighths, number four is four eighths. And I bet you can figure out number three. Not trying to get it perfect, just trying to get everything, the bulk of it off. Tomorrow it's supposed to be above freezing for a couple hours, so that'll help melt it off faster. And the day after that, it's actually in the 40s, so it should all be gone by then. And then next week, we've got some days in the 50s, which is kind of rare for us in January, so we're trying to take advantage of that, get pushed through this so we can get it poured while the weather's kind of warm for the season. Get them slid to where they need to be then we can start cutting them off to the correct length we need i've got the bottom and the top pieces down in that trough and uh we're just going to get them cut and then set back up on top out of the way we're just trying to get everything cut today i'm just sliding these to the end of the icf floor system like this oh you guys can you see it just slide it to the end of the icf floor system like this we're going to slide all these even hop over to the other side and cut them at that same spot and then the off fall should be big enough for that tie-in piece we're going to have to make. So we got all of those cut. They're all kind of laying in the trough right now. We'll set them up on top when we're done so they're out of the way. We're going to take all these off fall pieces right here and we're going to make a little tie loop to tie the ends together. This rebar bender here, this is Dirt Perfects. He bought this when they first started doing ICF like 10, 15, I don't know, 2008-ish maybe. Might be kind of making that number up, but pretty close to that time period. It's probably the only tool that has survived the duration of that business. But uh, she's frozen solid right now. So we're gonna thaw her out first.
So it is a cutter slash bender number four on the top and you can cut number five here. And when he first got it, it did number five really well. But over the years, everything's kind of rounded off and it really takes a heck of a lot more effort than it used to. So the grinder was my go-to on the number five bar up there. But the bending fashion, bending part of this should still work pretty good. All the rollers still roll. Should be good to go. Now these little cutouts, these are six inches deep or tall or however you want to say it. They'll be off the bottom about an inch and a half and the grid up here on top will also be up an inch and a half. Since that distance is the same, they're both gonna be up an inch and a half. We should just be able to do a six inch loop and get it exactly how we need. The only exception is gonna be around the stair opening. Those will have to be a little taller. I just made a mark right there on the board with a piece of chalk, which works great in the snow in case you're wondering. And then I can just slide it right up to there. And then right at the front of that can you, where are you guys looking? I don't know. Right at the front of this nut, if I slide it to there and bend it, that gives me six inches. And then a little bit of manipulating, making a few rotations that way. Should do the job just fine. I got a whole bunch of these to make. I think I might go find something for a lever to kind of pull. Number five bar puts up a little bit of a fight and the snow and ice definitely don't help. But that's what we're looking for. are like way up there so at this end 
there's no structure on this. This will just be open slab and I'll show you a different shot later to explain that. But that means these won't have those loop tie backs to tie the beam all together. These will just end over top of the concrete on the ICF wall. So we're just gonna right there. So starting right about that one, they don't get that loop tie back to where the bars are tied together like that. They'll have a different style connection. There's no structure up there. That's just going to be open slab. You can have your, your Titanic moment on top of the world thing up on the bow, a couple chairs, what have you. So they're cut just a little bit different. Those are cut to where they go to the edge of that concrete so that 5 8 that reinforced beam will be sitting right on top of the concrete, which the others will as well. They're just gonna be doing that with that loop tie back. The difference is we're gonna be doing it with that bar there. One gets tied on top, one gets tied on bottom, and then that reinforcement carries out over the concrete wall. I do apologize. It's very difficult to explain things on this end of the camera. I can't wait till that new DJI camera comes in and we can hopefully have all those issues resolved. So you can see the difference here. This is the normal beams that we're running. This is gonna be for those deeper beams that run alongside the edge of the stairwell. But those are all bent and done now. And we're getting pretty close to being down at the number five bar, which I'm very excited about. The other thing I'm really excited about, and as silly as it sounds, I would much rather be working in this weather than what's coming in the next couple days. This is all supposed to thaw out. It's supposed to get pretty warm up into the 60s, believe it or not, like I said earlier. It's gonna be a slimy mess. So I'd rather bend this rebar when it's frozen out versus fight in the mud, and especially, because now I got all this bar up off the ground, we'll have good clean rebar and I don't have to fight that either. The next thing we gotta do is these little fellers right here. That's number five. And because there is some structure in that, we're gonna do those tie back loops the same way I'm doing here. It's so short though, I'm gonna try to just do it out of one piece. That's gonna take some math, which isn't my strong point. 32 plus 32, 64 plus 16, eight times two, is gonna be 16 plus 64 should be 74 should be 80 plus another 32 should be 112 yeah i, I don't know let's try 112 I used eight when I should have used six. This isn't the deeper beams. This is the normal beam pocket. But there you go. That's a beaut, huh? And we just tie wire that together. We'll flip it so the double bar that's overlapped is on the bottom. And I'll do the trick. Look at that. Beautiful. We'll have to weave this bar through there. It's going to get a little complicated when it comes to tying everything and getting all the layers correct as far as what goes in first, but I love that. I love that.
So those pieces right there are the ones that will wrap around, down around like that. Three on each side. So those are done a bit, number five bar. But we're at a number five bar. Good news is though, we only got one, two, three runs left to do that number five bar. So I should be able to pick up two 20 footers. I'll probably just get three 20 footers just to be sure. And that number five bar cutting and bending is done. And that, that feels good. Let's move on to the number four, shall we? So the number four bar, four eighths, half inch, whatever you want to call it, goes on a 12 inch, one foot grid. Lucky for us, all the two by sixes you see the ends of that run across with the light deck, those are every one foot, so we can just match that. Now we're only gonna lay the ones that go across like this right now. We're not gonna run long ways yet, because if we do that, that's gonna get in the way of what we have to do as far as tying all that bottom layer of rebar up. morning about uh, about seven o'clock I don't know I look behind me for the time it's about seven o'clock supposed to warm up pretty decent today above freezing it's kind of steamy the weather's been wild the past few weeks but that's okay we're gonna get the laser out before we can finish getting that rebar cut around that front side we've got to get all the well let me just let me show you what we got to do we got to finish that around the front end of that bow and it's gonna be pretty tricky I had 3D batteries at the house, it takes four. Three looks like it was enough. So because this rolls, the front of this thing drops down about an inch and a half total at the bow section. So we gotta set the laser because it's gonna stick up past the foam just a little bit. So you can see, like I said, sticks up about an inch and a half past that foam. Foam dies down because of the roll we have into it. We do have some gappage going right here, but we had that whenever we did the ICF, so I know what I need to do there and make that happen. Let's get this piece on, and then we'll slap a two by six on there. I've already got this stuff cut over here. Oh gosh, okay. So we can go ahead and get this side done. So we got our bendy boards made with our kerf cuts, just went every one foot. The only catch is it's more than 16 feet from where that one stops to where the bow is. So what we got to do is figure out where that's at and add one more brace here in the middle. come back one the turn starts right here I think I want to start before the turn get sistered in there I have to move all this ball that's okay Oof. not very squirrely 
square, is it? Oh, that's a lot better. I like that. I don't know where my shorter screws went. They've, uh... I hope they're not under all this dirt. Surely not. Surely I moved them. Okay. So we have the sharpest part of that bend in. The next step, I need to hook up on this far end and, and pull it that way just a little bit with a come along. That'll be pretty quick and easy. I think before I do that, I'd better get some more braces and get these locked in like I showed earlier with the laser. So when I pull it, it doesn't try to roll any more than it already wants to. Got my hang torque established here. That should do it. Good thing it didn't need any more. I'd have to go eat some food real quick, huh? So that side went up in like a third of the time. When you're just doing handwork and your thinking work is already done, it just goes so much faster. And I think that's what I'm most excited about is all the thinking work is done. Everything that I had a question mark on my head and how is that going to work out? And how am I going to get that to do what I want it to do? I've got it all figured out. We've done it at some point on this project and we're literally down to just the handwork, which is just getting it done. And I'm super excited about that. As far as how that ties in up on the very tip of the bow, that'll be cake. The big bend is already done. We're just bringing two boards together and cutting them off at the angle, however they meet. And then we just have to fill in all that stuff. I mean, we're just filling in at that point. I'm going to get my tools picked up. And then there's one other thing I want to show you because I know a lot of people are going to ask. So I'll just go ahead and make one of them real quick and, sh and show you what we're going to do. And then maybe I might get out the new drone that old Mrs. Clayman got for me for Christmas. Oh, it's been a while. There's a lot of trees, but I'm feeling kind of lucky today. <laughs> Made a shape. I just wanted to show you with that bender because a lot of people are going to ask in the next video, well, why didn't you just use the bender, the rebar bender you used in the first one? It doesn't bend tight enough radius to make the little stirps we need to make. We're going to use all this number three bar 
to make a stirrup to tie that top row rebar to the bottom row rebar. And where we have two and two, we'll box it out to uh, you know tie it all together. That one just doesn't bend tight enough radius. So I got to make a jig, and that'll be in the next video. But there we go. Now I don't have to answer that question in the next video, and that's all taken care of. Let's get the drone out. I am beyond excited to once again have a drone and get shots like this because this is one of those projects where it's just hard to show the actual shape of it, the scale of it, without getting up in the air and getting some aerial photography. Man, this thing is turning out awesome. A tremendous amount of progress made, and I'm optimistic that we will be pouring concrete next week. I'm really trying to get this thing poured while we've got this warm spell coming up. I worked on this thing again today after getting done editing this video, made even more progress, so she's really moving along great. I can't thank you guys enough for the support. Again, this project is fully funded by YouTube Revenue, which means you guys watching the video, liking the video, commenting on the video, and most importantly, sharing this video. You can share it on Facebook, share it with your friends, just text your grandma and say, hey, check this thing out. That definitely helps the channel grow and helps us keep doing projects like this. I appreciate you guys watching. And as always, we will catch you on the next one.